So, did you ever want to add some dynamic, interactive music to your Godot game? Like a soundtrack that slowly morphs depending on the position of your player, or its distance to the enemies? Because that's actually quite easy to do. Now, just before we dive in, have you ever wanted to get some professional feedback for your Godot project? If you join my Patreon as a Square member, you'll get to ask me for personalized reviews once every two months. That's a full analysis of your project, with a detailed report and suggestions for improvement. All this for only 40 bucks. So if you're curious, be sure to have a look at the free article that explains it all over here. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use the audio stream synchronized resource type that was introduced in Godot 4.3 to easily create dynamic music in your games. As you can see in the official docs, it's basically a quick to use and ready made tool to play several audio streams simultaneously, and so Godot will always make sure that they're synchronized for you. Okay, so suppose that for your game, you want to make a music dynamic, and so the best way to do that is to create two variations that have the same tempo and are just variations in the orchestration. Like those two short musics that I made. Here I've got an epic version with some brass, high strings and loud drums, and a softer, more melancholic version with a piano and a music box. But you see that they play the same theme, and they have the same tempo, meaning that they can actually play together without it sounding weird. Now, in Godot, I've got this basic scene, with my player avatar in the middle, so that's the little knight, and two buildings on each side. My goal will be to have the music become more melancholic when the avatar gets closer to the runes on the left, and more epic when it gets closer to the castle on the right. And to do that, it's actually pretty easy. First, I've added an audio stream player node in my scene, then in its inspector, in its stream slot, I've created an audio stream synchronized resource, inside which I've referenced my two musics, the epic one in the slot 0 and the melancholic one in the slot 1. Finally, I've attached a script on this audio stream player node that contains the following code. First of all, at the top, I've defined my entire X range, so the minimum and maximum X position when my player goes from the runes to the castle. I've also defined this constant, which is a reference volume in decibels that is basically mute for us humans. Then I've got an exported slot to get a reference to my player character so that I can get its current position, and I've got those three variables that will define how fast the music transition happens. Basically, this is a normalized value, so between 0 and 1, and the lower it is, the faster the switch will happen, the larger it is, the longer it will take. The xmin and xmax variables are just the matching subrange that will update my music's volumes when the player walks through it. This subrange is centered around the middle of the x-axis, and the value of the transition value will determine how spread those two sub-extremities are. I've also decided to arbitrarily set the transition value to 0.1, meaning 10% of the total length, by default when the game starts, in the ready hook. But in fact, the real meat of the code is in the process function. This is where I get the current position of my player along the x-axis, then use an inverse slurp to get it back as a ratio of the x subrange between my xmin and xmax bounds, and finally use this to update the volume of my two musics. Now, for this first step, the idea is that my two music variations don't add up. Whenever one gets louder, the other gets dimmer, and vice versa. So I just use this ratio, or its reverse, to set the current volume of my two clips in the slots 0 and 1 of my audio stream synchronized resource. Oh, and by the way, the min computation around it is just a way to make sure that the volume doesn't go over 0 decibels. And if we run this, you see that, at first, because I'm slightly more on the right, it's the epic version that plays. If I get closer to the castle, I hear only this epic variation, but it doesn't get too loud. But then, if I move my avatar towards the left, you hear that the music gradually switches to the melancholic version, until we hear only this one when we're on the far left. I've also set up a basic UI so that you can see where I'm in my music switch at the top, and so I can play around with the transition value by increasing or decreasing the spread slider at the bottom. So you notice that if we spread the transition more, then the switch takes longer to occur, it is way more subtle, 
and on the other hand, if we make the transition as small as possible, then the music changes almost in an instant. Now, of course, both of those extremes can be a bit jarring, as is. If the transition is too long and there is no other music in the background, then there will be a weird moment in the middle, where there is just no music at all anymore, and this is a bit strange. Similarly, if the transition is immediate, we kinda lose the whole benefit of the setup. This is why another, maybe more interesting technique when using an audio stream synchronized resource is to always keep one music as the background and just have other tune up or down on top of it. For example, here let's say that we want the melancholic version to be the one that always plays, and the epic version just gets added on top, more or less depending on your position. To do this, we simply need to remove the very last line of our process function, the one that controlled the volume of the melancholic version, and so it will just be always at 0 dB, but then the epic variation will depend on our player's position when we get on the right. And well, there we go! If you try this now, you see that we've indeed implemented a basic dynamic music system that is controlled by the position of our player. The closer we are to the runes, the more the melancholic version plays on its own, and the closer we are to the castle, the more the epic version comes in as well, to play on top of the first one. So yeah, that's an easy way to make some interactive music in Godot. I really hope you liked this quick tip, don't hesitate to react in the comments, and subscribe to the channel to get more videos, and of course a huge thanks to my Patreon members for the support, and to you for watching. And as always, take care.